Hey guys, what's going on? For those of you who are new here, my name is Brooke and I work for my dad who owns a canvas factory in Pompano Beach, Florida. Today we will be showing you the proper way to tie up your boat at the dock. So this is my dad, Brian. He's gonna give you a little overview about tying your boat up at the dock. As Brooke said, my name's Brian. I've lived on the water here for 26 years and when I first moved to the water, I would have customers bring me a boat and I wasn't quite sure how to tie them up right. I'd tie them up at the dock and then bow would be sticking out or the transom would be sticking out they'd be moving from front to back and I was so afraid of damaging somebody's boat I would call friends of mine that were saltier than me who have boated a long time hey can you come over and help me tie up this boat they'd spend five minutes on my lines next thing you know my boat's just sitting there square at the dock not hardly moving at all and the first time somebody showed it to me I didn't quite get it and I actually had to call a friend of mine two or three times you don't have to be embarrassed about it most people they have a boat on a trailer their whole lives and they only tie up to docks occasionally so that they don't become really that good at it. If you're a, a homeowner and keep your boat on a lift, you don't really get that much practice at tying your boat up. So you might go to a restaurant or you may go to a, you know, a home in the Keys and not quite sure how to tie your boat up. And if you do it wrong, you can damage your boat. I've gotten pretty good at tying boats up. So I'm gonna go over a few you know, things and show you just how easy it is to tie up a boat safe and um, so you can sleep at night and not, not worry about it get caught under the dock. So this is my family's 247 Edgewater. I'm going to bring it around the end of the canal and bring it back down and dock it at the dock and then we'll show you guys how to properly tie it up. So I just got the boat to the dock, now we're gonna show you how to properly tie it up. So the first thing that you need is four ropes. It can either be on the boat already or at the dock that you're coming to, but you need four ropes to properly do this. All right, now I'm gonna show you how I like to tie a boat up. Um, the, the biggest misconception that I hear everybody talk about is, oh, I have to leave slack in my line for the tide. No, you don't, that's wrong. You want tight, tight lines, but they have to be long. If you tie a short line from a cleat to a cleat, a short line, and you have a three foot tide change, you're in trouble. You're gonna hang your boat. Never, ever tie a short line unless you're fueling up and you're gonna be there for five minutes. Go ahead, tie a short line. But if you're gonna even go to dinner for an hour to two hours, don't tie a short line. The tide can change a lot in an hour or so. So you want long lines and you want them tight. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You want them tight. You don't want your boat moving all over the place with all this slack. A long line goes up and down like that and you won't hang your boat. So I'm gonna start out by showing you how to position your boat at the dock. What you want, I'm gonna push this boat forward a little bit. What you want is, is you don't want your transom to ever to be able to go under the dock. So what I like is I like my transom to be about two to three feet forward of a fender. See, right about here, now I have three feet past this fender. Okay, this is where I'm gonna start tying the boat off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is throw Brooke a line and she's gonna put this one on the um, outboard cleat. The best way to do this is to use this part of the end of the rope so that you can easily just slip it in, put it around the cleat, and then the person on the dock can tie it off now. Okay, so I go around the piling first and then I go to the cleat and I go around twice before I start my hitch. Then I hitch it and I hitch it again, okay? Now I'm gonna ask Brooke to hook one to the bow. So now our second rope is gonna go to the bow cleat. Again, we're using this end of the rope, not the tie end, so we can simply just throw this on here and then the person on the dock 
has the rope in it. Now, back to what I was saying. Never tie a short line. If you're fueling up for five minutes, fine. If you're at dinner for over an hour, no good. Okay? I have another cleat here. Now, if you're at dinner for an hour, this is fine. But for long term and not to have to worry about my lines, I'm going to go to the next cleat. Because I have plenty of rope. It's nice to have long enough ropes to do the job properly. If you buy too short of lines, then you have to do what your lines will allow you to do rather than what you want to do. Okay, now look, I have a cleat here. I'm not going to this cleat because I'd be pulling this cleat right out. I'm going to come to the other side and I'm going to tie up right here. Now, what this is called, this is called shear pressure because I'm pulling on the piling instead of the cleats. It's pulling on the sides of these bolts. That's what shear pressure is rather than pulling my cleat out. Now, if you were going to dinner, these two lines would probably do the trick. But I like to put four lines on, and here's why. You tie to someone's cleat, you don't know how good it is. If you're enjoying dinner and that cleat pulls and you have no other cleats, guess what? Your boat's swinging out into the intercoastal or whatever dock you have it on. So I'm gonna show you. I, it, it just takes another couple of minutes. You need to have a midship cleat. Well, you don't have to, but our boat has a nice midship cleat. And I only use half the cleat for this rope. Now look, I could go to this cleat, but I'm not. This is long enough for my spring line. This is probably about 11 or 12 feet. I'm coming to the opposite side. I go around twice, pull it tight, and that's it. What this line does is this line here makes it so the boat cannot go forward. See, I'm trying to pull my boat forward. Look, it's, I can't pull it, I can't pull it an inch. I have it right where I want it. But because this line is long, as the tide goes up and down, it just does this. It doesn't make my line very much tighter or, or slack. It just goes up and down with the tide. Here's my fourth line. Put it through this, this midship cleat. I'm only using half of it. I have a cleat here, too short. So I'm gonna go to this cleat here. I'm gonna pull it tight. Wrap it around twice, hitch it off. Doesn't take any time at all. Now, watch this. We're in a quiet canal, but still, on the weekends when there's big boats going down the intercoastal, we'll get surge in here. And if you don't have your boat tied up tight, your boat will go shh, two feet this way, shh, two feet that way. With these four lines, the way I have it tied, look, I pulled it two inches this way, and two inches that way. All right, I'm gonna repeat myself again, because it's really important. This part is really important. You don't want the back end of your boat to be so far back that it could swing slightly and get under the dock. And you don't want it so close to this fender that it could, that it could get in front of this fender and get under the dock. You want it two to three feet behind behind here and if you look down down the dock here you see how our boat is square with the dock that's all in a matter of adjusting your bow line and your stern line to get that straight if you look down there and your boat's crooked that means you have to loosen your stern line and tighten your bow line get your boat square to the dock so it's pushing on these two fenders evenly so now that you've done this and you have your boat properly tied up at the dock, you never have to go through that ever again. If you're docking behind your house or at a marina, once you get your rope set up, that's all you have to do. And when you're ready to leave the dock, you're just gonna come up to your cleats. You're gonna pull them loose and just slip that right up from the cleat. And this goes back onto the dock. So then when you come back to the dock, all of your lines are set up already. You grab the lines and you just put them at the right cleat that they're supposed to go to and docking will be a breeze. You never have to worry about it ever again. 
the lines will be set up perfectly where they need to be and it'll be much easier for you. So let's say that you're leaving your dock and you're going to dinner and you're like, oh, grab a few ropes, we might need them at the dock. Don't take those ropes that you already have set up. You don't wanna to have to go through it every single time because it'll be annoying. Invest in a couple more ropes. You have ropes on your boat ready for that and just leave those four ropes on your dock at all times so they're always ready and it makes boating much more simple. One person is all it takes to dock if all of your lines are set up. All right, so if you guys have learned anything from this video, it's to never tie a short, tight line. Your lines can be tight as long as they're long because they have stretch and your boat can just go up and down, no problem. You tie a short line, we've seen it many times where the boat gets, tide goes down and your boat will be hanging like this and that's how boats sink at docks. You always see boats sink at docks and you're like, how does that happen? They didn't tie the boat properly. Not only can short ropes sink a boat, but also if you forget to tie those spring lines and your boat can move too much, the back end of your boat goes under under the dock with the wind blowing and the tides and when it comes up your boat gets stuck under the dock and that's also how it sinks. You can damage not only your boat, you can also damage the dock. All simply can be prevented just by knowing how to tie your boat properly. So if you guys have any questions or anything, comment down below. I'll answer your questions. If you guys like videos like this, comment down below also and let me know. Again, as I said earlier, I work for the Canvas Factory in Pompano Beach. We do all kinds of boat canvas. We do cushions, we do T-tops, we do boat covers, we do bimini tops, we do upholstery for your backyard covers and things like that. We specialize in sail shades like sun shades for the back of the boat or the front of your boat. A lot of people buy boats based on shade. A lot of people's wives, their kids, they need shade. Super easy, they go up in less than a minute. So I will have the Canvas Factory page linked down below. Again, we're in Pompano Beach, so we do all of our work custom. We need to have access to the boat or you can also bring the boat to us. We also have a YouTube channel for the Canvas Factory. It's called Boat Canvas Factory and we have a few of our videos of some of our work that we've done in the past. So I will have all that information linked down in the description. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.